Flex Luther, Malcolm Flex, Devon Gotti, Devon Gotti, the Teflon Don. <laughs> it's the super villain. Oh, it's an absolute must that I do this session for a variety of reasons. When I first came into the YouTube space, I was one of the few people who used my true name, Marquette Devon Burton, for there is no dirt on that name. That name is pristine the world over. Didn't come in with fake aliases, came in under my true name, which I've built up over time living in the same respectable way. We have many disbelievers who say, oh, no, he can't be what he says he is. There's no way he exercises every day. There's no way he's never had a sip of alcohol. There's no way he's never engaged in drugs. There's no way he's never used caffeine. There's no way he is what he says he is. And you see the demons and devils among us no the devil is not down below holding a pitchfork there are devils among you and i they're mostly broken ugly and when these devils encounter goodness oh they attack it they hate it string you up it's how jesus ended up on a cross now isn't it you even hear people say bad things about mr rogers and he's not cocky and arrogant hmm yes the wicked will always have something to say. During this session, we're going to review a number of things. First and foremost, we're going to start it from the beginning. How do we get here? What are we really talking about? Where did these false trumped-up charges ever come from? We'll take a quick review on that. And then for my entertainment, I want to look at some of the comments on uh, some of the videos where they were like, the saint and the sinner has been arrested. The saint and the sinner had the oo-wop, the click-clack, the thang, the pew-pew. Oni caught a case, and they said that he was high on dope, drunk on alcohol. He's a hypocrite and a liar. Well, let's see. Take a look. I also uh, just went to court today, as you can see. I'm a free man. And the question is why. For those of you who have been to court, um, you know that there are a number of pleas that you can put in. Guilty, not guilty, no contest. And we also know that there's instances in which, you know, the DA might not bring charges against someone, generally due to lack of evidence. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that because this is very important. And I welcome all of those who are in attendance because you watch my content and appreciate it. And I also welcome all of the haters who are here. And I want to encourage all of you who might not wholly be demons to self-reflect. Some of you, when you heard this bad news, you said it must be true. I knew he couldn't be what he's posed himself to be. And then you went off running at the mouth. Not a manly thing. You went off of gossip and hearsay and lies. Many of the lies you made up yourself and you propagated these things. I want to see you in the comments below this video apologizing. Marquette, I am a man. And as a man, I want to say I apologize because now that the truth is clear, I lied about your good name. I want to see you in the comments apologizing. I was wrong, Marquette. I was on the small bandwagon, the short bus, the yellow short bus of haters, and I was wrong, and I apologize. I want to see you all in the comments. Let's go ahead and get started. I want to take you back. And I find this story to be particularly curious and, in fact, saddening in as much as this happened to a person who has pretty much followed the rules, obeyed the law, got good education, worked in the formal economy, run businesses, helped other people's families support themselves. And in fact, on that Friday night, while you had a multitude of degenerates in a place called Sin City on a Friday night partying and misbehaving, I was leaving my office. I was leaving my office late at night, going home to my nice home, in the suburbs, a gated community. And I was targeted. So I start recording immediately. Why? Because unfortunately, I've had experience with the police. Many have, especially if you've grown up in a ghetto. Huh? If you're a, a certain type of individual, you may have had more contact with the police. So I immediately start recording. Not what you would do if you were 
a drunk driver or a driver under the influence of drugs because you'd just be incriminating yourself. Huh? Want me to turn off the car? Yes, go ahead and turn it off. Officer Wolfinger, reason we stopped. So he walks up. Hey, you want me to turn off the car? Very respectful. You failed to stop at the red light right there. I want you guys to remember, he said you failed to stop at the red light, which would mean I'm not on the freeway. You're on the highway uh, speeds in excess of 80. Seems to be stuttering when he says that. Is he nervous? Why? He said on the highway, I was driving at speeds excess of 80, which is dangerous. I agree with you. So if it was so dangerous, why, oh, why did you wait until I got off of the freeway? Why didn't you pull me over on the freeway when I was speeding at a dangerous pace? Instead, you waited until I got off of the freeway because apparently it wasn't that dangerous. And then you say I ran a red light. Okay. You have your driver's license on you? You'll notice that I didn't respond to any of that because I know this is a setup. This is an attempt to get me to agree or to incriminate or to argue, uh, argue so they can escalate it and say, step out of the car. You're not being cooperative. Yes. They say crazy things to, to get you to react. There's no reaction here. We're playing chess. And at the end of the day, if you want to write me a ticket, fantastic. If it's nonsense, I'll pay my lawyer to spank the case like a bad child. If it's a reasonable ticket, then I'll probably still pay my lawyer to spank the case like a bad child. Or if you know, my lawyer says, hey, we can't get out of this one. Cool. Cut the check. Carry on. Get out of my face. So there's no response to the nonsense. And he's flashing the light in your face. Um, and this is a tactic of theirs. Blinding light. I do. Registration insurance, please. He says, do you have your license. I said, I do. He didn't say, can you retrieve it? Do you have? I do. I do. Do you want me to grab it? Yes. I do. See, do you want me to grab it? I'm prompting him. I do. You have any weapons, or drugs in the car? He says, do you have any weapons or drugs? Well, that's none of your concern. Really? It's none of your concern. You're here because supposedly I was speeding on the freeway and ran a red light. I could have all the clappers in the world. Could be Rambo on my way to a mission, but it's none of your concern. You pull me over for supposedly speeding on the highway and running a red light. And let's focus on that. So we won't be having any conversation because you're not my friend. Uh, your favorite rapper claims they don't talk to the boys, but they do. They even hire him as security. I would never. Shout to Georgi supporting the work rights, peace of the saints in a real way. Shout out to the saints around the world and Europe. And we're really going to get into it today. And mind you, for all of the haters, if you have $15, which most of you don't, but if you have $15, I'm willing to let you come on uh, and explain, you know, any of this because i'm fascinated oh and by the way i do have uh some audio from the court uh case today and i trust you all would like to hear it shout out to george supporting via cash app shout out to charlie always supporting as well may i also acknowledge t shout out to charles he just got a uh, sweatshirt it looks like he got the super villain sweatshirt couldn't be more appropriate for such a conversation I think we'll enjoy this one. Much to learn here and you know the it was really a pity that i had to suffer this experience in as much as you know, I am pro order. So, in as much as I am pro order, I respect the concept of police and policing, and I think it's necessary. I would never be foolish enough to say defund the police. But within the context of a corrupt government, uh, the police are just a tool of a corrupt institution. Ah, uh, let's carry on. I have to get my bags behind me. Do you have any weapons or drugs in the car? He just asked me twice. He already asked me the first time, do you have any weapons or drugs? There's no legal requirement to answer that. He asked me a second time. I'm Again, I'm not going to answer because it's no legal requirement. Can you stop flashing that light in my face? Am I supposed to look forward or look at you? I can't hear you. Am I supposed to look forward or look at you? You're like flashing a light in my face. Okay, sir. Where's your driver's license? Are you going to get it for me or what? I just told you it's in my bag. I need to reach behind. That's why right, I just step, asked you if you mind. Out of the car for me, please. Now you see, look how I look at the look how I look at the camera. Like, oh, this shit is set up, yo. This this is. I look at the camera like word word, my boy. You're here for a traffic stop. It's a traffic stop. All you need is my license and registration. I volunteer to retrieve it. I have it. My license is good. My insurance is in good standing. My registration is great. I got everything you need. Just take it and write me a ticket. I'll be on my way. But that's clearly not what they wanted. There was certainly a, a bit of a setup here, no doubt. 
He clearly did not want my license, insurance, and registration because before they pulled me over, they already read, ran my plates and they knew my license and registration was already good. So they didn't want to see that because they can't trump anything up because the car's in my name. It's my car. My license is current and my insurance is good. So none of that would help them with what they're trying to do. Little does he know, he started up something ugly. And I'll spend and spend and spend until I can hurt these people. Being very uncooperative, I don't know why. You want me to get Now listen, he said, you're, quote, you are being very uncooperative, I don't know why, end quote. This is a lie. These are the things they try to do so that they can, you know, support their own, uh, you know, cover their ASS when things go left, which in this case, they are going to go left. Um, notice. I'm only required to provide license insurance registration. I offered two times to provide it. He never consented, never consented. He asked me two questions. I have no legal obligation to answer it. Therefore, you cannot be defined as uncooperative if you're not cooperating with something that you need not cooperate with. Huh? True comedy. I just want you guys to see how I looked at the camera when he, when he said that bullshit. You could, like, you could tell, like, quite, quite sharp. He already knew what time it was. Check this out. Look forward. Or I look at the camera like he just said a bad joke. Look at you. You're, like, flashing a light in my face. Okay, sir. Where's your driver's license? Are you going to get it? Where's your driver's license? I just said it's in the back. Do you mind if I get it? For me or what? I just told you it's in my bag. I need to reach behind. That's why right, I just step, asked you if you mind. The car for me, please. I'm just going to open this door here. And you see, I'm extraordinarily sober enough that I can state I'm just going to open this door here. Everything I'm doing, I'm narrating the experience because, you know, these devils, they'll find any reason. All right. Step out, go over to the car. I do not consent to any search. And I immediately say I don't consent to search, which I don't. You know, who needs peasants going through the things of a king? Now, here he is engaging in his uh, preliminary search. And right now you can't hear, but they're basically asking me a bunch of questions, thinking that they're, they're, uh, they're about to catch me slipping, which they're not, because I basically said, I don't talk to police at all for any reason. So do what you're going to do. Then they say, um, will you submit to a... Uh, a field sobriety test. Oh, this is a, a farce. A field sobriety test is the biggest farce. It, it's a, a total scam. Marquette, why is that? Well, imagine. They told me to get out of the car. As soon as I get out of the car, they start asking me a bunch of questions. I say, I, I don't talk to the police. And then he says, well, you're, uh, you're under the influence. I say, influence of what? He says, you're drunk. I say, oh, that's funny. Are you wearing body cam? He says, yes, I am. I say, well, that's curious because... You know we're going to play that back. And when we subpoena that body cam footage and we play that back, it'll clearly demonstrate I don't have slurred speech. I'm being articulate. I'm making eye contact with you. I'm very steady. You won't have a leg to stand on in terms of saying I'm drunk. Then they say, okay, well, submit to a field sobriety test. I say, no, no, thank you. Why? Because it's a subjective matter. The person who said that you're drunk, listen to me, the person, the individual who subjectively said you're drunk, is the same person who's going to conduct the field sobriety test. You think that's going to be a fair objective test? Forget about it. And me, I don't collaborate with the government. We're not friends at all. So anyways, I say, no, no, thanks. He says, well, then we're going to take you to jail. I said, well, good thing I don't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> good thing I don't celebrate pagan holidays then, because this was actually Christmas. He said, we're going to take you to jail. I said, well, good thing I don't celebrate Christmas. They put me in the back of their uh, cruiser. I'm sitting back there. There's another guy sitting in there. There's another plainclothes guy because two police uh, SUVs have pulled me over. Another plainclothes guy was there. Then a sergeant shows up and he's talking to me and he's asking me questions. I said, why do you guys keep talking to me? I told you many times. I, I don't talk to you guys. You have no integrity. I don't talk to you guys. You're not my friend. Clearly, you're inconveniencing me. In fact, I don't talk to you. You guys are here for who knows what reason. I don't talk to you at all. And then the guy goes and comes back and he says, you know what? You're not drunk. I say, well, yeah, I, I told you that before, but I also believe you knew that before. He says, you're high. What? H high on what, my boy? He says, you're high. I said, well, high on what? 
Is it Coke Crack, Smoke, MDMA, Special K, Ecstasy Pills? What is it? What am I high on? Did I pop a molly and I'm sweating? What's going on here? He says, yeah, you're high. I said, okay, all right, if that's how you want it. I'm not taking a field sobriety test. So I uh, guess we're going to go down to the, the station, aren't we? He says, yeah, you're going to go down to the station. We're going to take a blood draw. I said, oh, fantastic, because you know what? When we take that blood draw and nothing comes back, I suppose they're going to wonder why you took me out of my car in the middle of the night on Christmas. You know, I, I suppose somebody's going to be curious about that. So then they start searching the car. I would say illegally, but what does the law matter in this country? What does the law matter? The government, especially when they're on the wrong side of the law, they just manipulate and lie, don't they? Isn't that what they do? That's what I've observed. Shout out to the people actually supporting the work. Yeah, they manipulate and they lie. huh? And what's worse is you have the demons and devils among us. Oh, they take the lies and run with it. And against someone like me, all you have are lies. That's all you have are lies. Because my truth is too good. You got to make up lies. Let's get into a shout to Solom uh, Solomon. He writes, tuition for all the wisdom in this life. Peace to the saints. We're going to get into it today. So shout out to the double baller alert and shout out to the ballers because today i will be engaging in boss talk you heard me if you have low self-esteem this is a good time to cut off the stream because we're going to talk some boss talk today you got flex luther malcolm flex the idol of james bond marquette devon devon Gotti, the teflon don they couldn't take him down the super villain i went to a big high school huh yeah a bunch of people los angeles county yeah, I went to elementary school in Los Angeles, LAUSD. You don't think not one person would come forward like, hey, I went to school with this guy. He was a nerd. Hey, I went to school with this guy. Yeah, he, of course he drinks. We went to high school parties, man. He in there slizzard off the weed and the henny. Not one time. I went to university, 25,000 plus undergraduates at Berkeley. I was the president of a fraternity. Not one person has ever come forward and said the man is lying. He does drink alcohol. You know the liars want to believe the lies or they're making up the lies. There's no way in hell you go through a life such as mine in Los Angeles, surrounded by a multitude. You go to a big university, president of a fraternity, and no one can remember you ever drinking? And then you go off and become successful and go to galas and, you know, fly around the world and you never drink once? There's not one photo of you drinking? There's not one person who can testify to it? Come on, guys. But you believed, but you believed the lie with no evidence. We're going to get into it today. We're going to get into it today, ladies and saints. Yes. We're going to teach. Shout out to Marcos, right? Peace to the saints. I'm hoping for the best for you, saint. You know what, Marcos? The beautiful thing is that I've I've lived and had the burden of a king's appetite. I've devoured women by the dozens, gorgeous ones. I've seen the Golden Bridge in Vietnam, the Great Wall of China. I've had suits tailored around the world from Beijing to Dubai to Monaco to Pasatano, everything that rhymes. I've seen all of the beauty of the world, beaches in Zanzibar, been in the mountains of Costa Rica, laid with the most gorgeous women in Colombia. Huh? And they weren't working girls, unlike some of you rascals. Lived in South Korea, lived in Latin America, lived throughout the United States. Seen the beauty of the south of France. I've done, listen to me, I've seen the most curvy women you'd ever want to see, real bodies in South Africa. I've done everything I ever wanted to do. I exhausted my bucket list when I was in my mid-20s. If I dropped dead this very moment, I could only drop dead with a smile. If I caught the worst disease and died slowly, I could only die happy. If my life ended now, all of my haters could live an additional 80 years and still would only achieve a fraction of what I've done in real life. I'm a very thankful, happy man filled with gratitude. I've lived over a decade more than I expected to live. I've outperformed the great majority of humankind. And when you consider what I actually come from, the true mud and dirt that I've come from, I've exceeded any, ex any reasonable expectation anyone could have ever had. If you look at someone like me and you don't look at me and take pride in me, 
something's wrong with you. When I look at other people succeeding, it makes me feel happier. Why? Because there's not an ounce of jealousy because I've delivered on my own potential. It's those who have not delivered on their own potential that hear you talk and fly and they feel more on the ground. huh? It's those who look at you when you feel strong and your chest is poked out and you're walking tall and then they start to feel small because they didn't deliver on their own potential. I'm proud of each and every one of you when I see you succeed. I love to hear you guys talk fly. Huh? It's encouraging. Anyways, I say all that to say, no, I appreciate you. But man, I I could drop dead of the, like I could get catch the plague right now and then drop dead in 10 days, ex, endure excru, excruciating pain and still say, "Thank you. I've lived an extraordinary life. I've lived the life of 10 men, 10 privileged men. That's how good my adult life has been." Huh? And it was all by choice. Listen to me. I've tried my best to be pro-police and pro-law and order. But I'll never forget when I was a youngster, my favorite uncle, Uncle Bill, showed up looking like a mummy, wrapped in bandage nearly from head to head to toe. Had his skull cracked because the police in San Diego nearly beat him to death. That's a true story. And that's not the only one. Shout out to Davion, writes, Peace of the Saints tuition. This one is extremely important. People have no clue. Shout out to Darius. Yeah, I bet the likes are low because a lot of those liars and haters are here watching. Big mad. Big mad. Why? They love to see a champion fall. You dig? Yeah, they, they want to see Floyd finally lose a fight. These are those people. Shout out to Men Tuition, supporting the work. He writes, Mr. Fax Kellerman. Marquette, you should add some hemology to your introduction. For example, Hemi Neutron, Hem Duncan, Hemi Butler, Hemi Hendrix. Peace to the Saints in a real way, man. Shout out to Chung supporting the work. I also acknowledge Mr. Thompson. Writes, Peace to the Saints. I've been waiting for this follow up since the original incident. Me too. I didn't watch any of the haters' videos because I don't like liars. Me either. That suit is player, good sir. I appreciate that. And per usual, custom handmade from scratch. None before, none to come. It's a one of one. Fits me like a glove. If I gave it to someone else, they say, what size is it? I'd have to say, my size. <laughs> yes, indeed. No other man could put this on. It's custom made just for me. Huh? I don't, I don't do brands. See, people, you know, simple people, they're like, oh, is that... Is that Gucci? Is that Hermes? I don't do brands. I just shop for fabrics. And I like them floral and elaborate. You did. Carrying on. Boss talk. Where are we at with it? Let's work. Oh. Let me reintroduce you all to the initial issue. So, as I said right here, these boys are like trying to get me to, you know, say something stupid. You can see this is quite a bit of time that the car's just sitting there because you got four of these dirt bags trying to interrogate me, but four of their brains together couldn't get the job done. Then I want you to know something. Oh, and here's another thing that's comical. I want you guys to always remember, I am so much the real deal that people have to make up lies. You guys, first they saw the Rolls Royce. They said, oh, that's not your car. Okay, cool. Then they see the convertible. Oh, he's renting the car. Okay, it's years later. He's still renting it. Um, then they see the Maybach. Okay, he's renting the car. It turns out it's still parked outside right now. It costs about $2,000 a day to rent such a car. This was in December. The car's out right now. So, okay, that's four months, uh, 30 days per month. That's 120 days times 2000 per day. I could have bought the car again, quarter of a million bucks. There you go. Will any of them say, oh, I was wrong, or oh, I apologize, or oh, I lied, or oh, I made that up, or I heard that from someone else and I repeated it? No, they'll never say that because they're lying on purpose, and that's why they need to be dealt with because you cannot compromise or rationalize with demons. We have demons among us. I want you guys to notice something. This is a traffic stop, a traffic stop. Why is there plainclothes officers here? For a traffic stop? Why is it that he's wearing a baseball cap and a red hoodie? Is that a Las Vegas PD um, uniform? Because I'm confused. 
why did this guy pull me over and why do they have four officers, two vehicles, a sergeant, and plainclothes officers? Why is that? Something's weird. Maybe Marquette's being targeted. Maybe it turns out that Marquette's actually squeaky clean and they're doing any and everything they can to take him down. Trumping up charges, perhaps? Wordplay. Trumping up charges to take down a leader? Hmm. And I want you guys to make sure you hear the volume on this. Listen to this. This thing's freaking nice. Now, do you think that being that they're 10, 15 years my senior, you think they feel good about opening up the door to my car and seeing a car that is worth, what, seven years of their labor? You think they feel good about seeing my car that's worth seven years of their full-time labor? No, that might make you jealous. Might make you jealous. I don't know. Might make you a little jealous. It is a Maybach. Oh, it is. It is a Maybach. It, well, it says that on the back of the car. So why would you ever be confused about that part? But more importantly, why don't you just do your job? What does it matter? Just do your job. You hear him? That's really cool. Bro, like, aren't you supposed to be a professional searching a car for, like, clearly you think there's some criminal stuff there. That's really cool. This is probably why they were, like, breaking my fucking refrigerator, thinking that it's a secret compartment storage unit. It's a secret compartment storage unit. When really it's just a refrigerator for a boss, you heard me, so I could put a little bit of apple cider in that motherfucker, you did? Because, again, I don't drink. There's no champagne. We're going to put some apple cider in there. We got the pure silver champagne flutes. We're going to fill them up, and we're going to pull up, you dig? That's all there is back there, man. It's not a secret, secret super-duper James Bond storage compartment unit. It's just some baller shit to impress these beautiful women, man. That's all that is. Chill. Another box? No, he has a BMW. Oh, see, and then here's some real hater shit. Now, imagine how mad you are when you're in the back of my Maybach, which is seven times your salary for your full-time labor for seven years. That'll get you mad. And then you find keys to my other cars. And you're over here in disbelief, not realizing there's people on the planet that have more than one car. Talking about, well, how's this a Maybach, but this is a BMW key? How's it a Maybach? This is a Rolls-Royce key. Those are other cars, dummy. Now, these are the dumb people that we have holding guns. These are the dumb people. Can you guys uh, confirm you can actually hear the volume on this uh, on this video? Confirm you can hear that volume. May I acknowledge by Cash App, shout out to Mr. Thompson, supporting the work. Shout out to Shamar. He writes, glad to see you're a free man. I also acknowledge Mr. Thomas. He writes, uh, peace of the saints tuition. And one thing I want you guys to know, and the government doesn't even realize this, if you put someone like me in the, in the pen or wherever you want to throw me, it's not going to help you. I'm not scared at all. I grew up around these people. Huh? That was my family growing up. I'm the only one in my family that's not done any real time. My mama done time. My grandma done time. My father done most of his life behind the wall. My friends done time. So you put me in that place with all of those men who are mentally impoverished, and I bring an abundance of knowledge. I'd probably be more dangerous inside. They forget that Malcolm X found his light when he was behind your walls. Huh? They forget that's where Malcolm X found his light. I'd be more dangerous there. But, you know, I don't really want to be there. I like to be around beautiful women. That's just me, though. I like to be in the lap of luxury, you know, enjoying opulence. I like to do the things that get these haters mad. That's just me, though. But if I had to go... That's not really where this vicious, wicked, evil government wants me. That's not going to help your cause. 
they probably try to Epstein me. That's probably what they try to do. Try to Epstein your boy. You dig? You know, so I just want you guys all know I'm in great mental health. I've never seen a therapist. I feel fantastic. Life's good. I'm enjoying the, you know, enjoying looking at this watch. You dig? Life's good. Shout out to the ballers. Shout out to Nigel. He writes, Peace of the Saints. The work in boss talk is greatly appreciated. See, you enjoy the boss talk when you know that you are a boss or you're on your way to becoming a boss. Shout out to Carlo with the baller alert. Shout out to the ballers all around the world. You dig? Huh? Let's work. Let's work. Shout out to the broke people still hating. I love it. <laughs> Shout out to the broke ones still hating. It's a beautiful thing. Keep it up. Stay, stay focused. Keep hating. Don't you give up. You know the worst kind of hater, and I know you guys are watching right now, so I do, I do want to talk to you. The worst kind of hater is the one that won't acknowledge or admit that they're a hater. You know, they, they try to act like they're friends or that they're cool with you, but they're really a hater. That's the worst kind. It's a terrible thing. Me, I'm a very blunt, straightforward person. So, like, I don't ever let them live or let them breathe. You hear me? When, they, when I encounter them in real life, they're like, oh, hey, man. I'm like, no, no, put your hand down. No, we're not cool <laughs> at all. You, we, we don't need to pretend. You dig? Carry it on. Yes, indeed. And if you want to join this thing of ours, patreon.com slash the saint in the center or the assassin.com. We welcome you warmly to this thing of ours. Bosses only, please. Bosses only. You dig? Carrying on. So let's, uh, oh yeah, did you guys confirm that you can actually hear the, the audio on this video? Because I, I find this to be comical. I want you to hear what these peons are saying as they harass your boy. Give a few folks to, uh, time to confirm. Yes, I can hear the audio on the video that we are playing. Okay, fantastic. Some fancy card. I'll be replying. I like that. <laughs> they go nuts. Hey, you see that shit like that. That's what's up. A fancy car, indeed. Shout out to Brody opening up my Bluetooth headphones. You heard me? The, the Maybach come with two sets of Bluetooth headphones. You know, in case you want to do something different than the person on the other side of the car. You heard me? Mercedes, okay. Hey, just uh, be advised, this is uh, it's recording you right now. Okay. Oh, be advised, it's recording you right now. Why do we have to? Why is that an issue? Why? You got to be advised, it's recording you right right now. We we can't we can't speak our minds anymore. We can't speak freely. Maybe you're saying something you shouldn't be saying. Maybe you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Oh, okay, cool, got it. I don't see uh, King G. He advice. Yeah, he advice. He's recording you. And then they start lying. I want you to understand the tactics of the police. And this is why I don't mess with the conservatives or the liberals. I would never say I'm a conservative because they have they're completely lost in America. The left the left is obviously crazy and obviously um here, here's the thing. The left is obviously mental and the left is also racist, but it's more it's a little bit more hidden. The right is incompetent and mental, and their racism is often a little bit more apparent, but they don't have any damn values. I mean, you have Caitlyn Jenner saying that they're a conservative. Imagine, imagine. When you have a group that anyone can join is not a good group to be in. So what the police will often do is they'll say, stop resisting arrest, stop resisting arrest. Why? So that on that body cam footage, they can cover their own ASS while they're brutalizing you when you're actually not resisting arrest, but they're saying that to create a narrative. Same thing here. Right now, the dude said, oh, why don't you go give him his phone? I'm in cuffs in the back of your SUV. I'm in cuffs. You're not about to give me the phone. You said give him his phone just so that you guys could turn it off without admitting that you're turning off the video recording. So then you could proceed to destroy my fucking car. Yeah, that's right. They went in and damaged my car. Yeah, they didn't give me the phone after that. I'm in cuffs. It's ridiculous. Okay, so here we go. I want to look at a little bit of hate, if you don't mind. If you would, if you would endure with me to look at a bit of hate, I don't get to do this all the time. So this is it's a special moment. I got time. Let's look at a little bit of hate. And so, what we've done up to this point is we've shown you the instance in which Marquette Devon Burton had left his office 
Yes, he has an office. Okay. Entrepreneur, you know, upscale gentleman, leaves his office in downtown Las Vegas. And downtown is generally when, where businessmen have their offices. He's leaving late at night because he's a hardworking man. He's completely sober on a Friday night, finished working around 11 p.m. He's a hardworking man by any measure. Didn't go out to party. He didn't go out to, you know, lay with a harlot. He's going home. Then the police pull over a law-abiding citizen who's sober. They pull over a saint in a place called Sin City. They pull over the one who's actually doing everything that the cops would want you to do if the cops were not absolute rubbish. Bacon boys. If they were actually good people, they pulled over the one person who's doing what they want you to do. Earn. Help others earn pay taxes, all that good stuff, right? Don't break the law. You pulled that guy over. Cool. Completely cooperative. Then they lie and claim that I'm not cooperative so they could trump up charges. They try to interrogate me on the spot. It fails. Then they have to stick with their initial lie. What's the initial lie? You are under the influence. Then they do what would be an illegal search if we had rights. You don't have any rights. That's why you need to be linked up with other people to protect yourself. So then they do what would be an illegal search. Then they uncover something that just adds insult to injury, right? They already like probably mad and jelly. They're like, man, this ball got a quarter of a million dollar car. and We didn't just found keys to three other cars that are not cheap. Hmm. Then they find a significant amount of cash money, cash money. And for sure, more than they all had in their bank account added together, probably had them big mad. They find a goddamn treasure trove of cash money. And then they come back like, uh, so what do you have all that cash for? It's none of your business. It's none of your business. Take me to the goddamn lockup. I'm ready to go. So. Oh, yeah, and then they find the clapper. God damn it. This ball is driving around with a bunch of money and a blammer. He got the blammer. This is a wild boy. And you know what? Eh, it's all true. It's all true. I was riding around with a bunch of money and a clapper. It's a fact. But that's not illegal currently. huh? I'm sure they can find a way to make it illegal, but that's not illegal. So then they drive me on down to the station, at which point I decide to Engage in very light conversation, lighthearted, that is, but very thoughtful conversation because I know that they're wearing body cam. And if I am on drugs or, you know, liquored up, I want it to be very clear in my conversation and the nature and quality of my conversation. So I said, yeah, let's have some conversation with these gentlemen while they're taking me down. I want when that that body cam footage gets played back, they're like, God damn, this dude was cooperative, pleasant, articulate. The hell did you take this guy down for? Except that's not what these people do. Yes, these people are part of a criminal organization that support one another at all costs, no matter how wrong and wicked. Huh? So anyways, they take me on down, and then they have me there with the dregs of society, people who are actually high, people who are actually on meth, coke, crack, smack, MDMA, Special K, Molly, perks, pills, and all the rest of it. People who are homeless, filthy, stinking, psychotic, and I'm thrown in with a lot of them. Shout out to SL supporting the work. <laughs> Bruh, I hope so too. Shout out to Back Health Rights. This is an underlying masculine desire for truth and knowledge that you are producing. Something on a mass scale, an awakening of the male spirit. I like that, an awakening of the male spirit. That's powerful. Somebody send that to me on IG, Marquette Devon, M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-T-D-A-V-O-N. Oh, and if you want to see how bosses really live, log in. He writes, I'm realizing the feminine spirit has misled men and will never own truth. Talk about it. That was profound. That was quite profound. Shout out to Dwayne supporting the work via Cash App. He writes, the cop is a dummy, confuses the Maybach for a BMW. I'm the saint and the sinner. I never told anyone I was perfect. I, listen, I'm a wild boy. I've been a wild boy. You can read my book, The Black Box. I highly recommend it. You want to know the truth of my life and who I am? It's written in, in plain ink, The Black Box, Marquette Devon Burton. In that book, all of those names are true legal names. You can Google any of the court cases in there. And if there's a pseudonym used, I know at the foot 
of that that page, I say this name has been changed to protect not the innocent, but the guilty. But aside from that, it's all real facts. Huh? So, yeah, if I do something crazy, I mean, you shouldn't be surprised. You read my book. You're like, this is a wild boy. That's the truth of who I am. And I also want to make a public service announcement for all of you goofballs. I, I just pray you guys don't come up in real life acting foolish and trying to do a prank because it will be tragic. I will react very quickly. And once that, that switch is flipped, it won't be unflipped. There won't be any like going back. So don't play with me. It'll get serious. It'll get dark really quickly. Don't find out the hard way. Carrying on. Now, let's look at the hate. Let's look at the hate and, and these comments are truly comical. So let's enjoy this together, ladies and saints. Let's really enjoy this. This guy writes, this DUA, DUI arrest sounds like some fan fiction. I don't even know what the hell that means. I really hope we get as much video footage as possible. Now, this one is fascinating because I provided the video footage, right? So that's a, a ton there. You can clearly see I'm not inebriated. Now, here's a funny thing. I was sent to clip one of the haters. They're watching the exact same video you and I just watched of me handling that situation very intelligently. And they're like, this guy is clearly drunk. This guy is clearly drunk. I'm like, these motherfuckers will look at the exact same thing and come up with the most extraordinary explanations. Why? Because it's fueled by hate and emotion. Jealousy is the emotion in particular. So I want to also encourage the internet, since we have all these goddamn internet sleuths, right? I want you boys to go and uh, do me a favor. Get the body cam footage from my case, and it is public record. I'd love to see the body cam footage. Because what will happen when you pull out that body cam footage, people are like, damn, he realer than I ever thought he was. Who would have known? A businessman is talking to the police in the way that the rappers claim they do. But when we get the body cam footage from when the rappers deal with the police, they be bumping their gums. But this guy is actually keeping it solid. Yeah, you, you'd be impressed when you get that body cam footage. I'd love to see it. I encourage all of you to get it. Your internet sleuths, go ahead and get it. I want to see it. And the fans, or I guess I should say the haters, they want to see, quote, as much video footage as possible. I want to see it as well. And this, this individual writes, uh, boy spent the night in a drunk tank and is going to try and claim he's done hard time. Nigga, you're right. God damn it, you're right. I did feel like it was hard time. It was very hard to be away from my bed. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I do have one of those very, very, very expensive beds. It does unnecessary shit. You know, it folds up like this and folds down, folds the legs up and shit. Bed vibrates. It does all kind of shit. Got lights under it. I missed it. I missed it. I'm not going to lie to you. They keep you up for like 23 hours straight. It's really inhumane. And they also had me, me, can you imagine, darling, in a room packed in like sardines and on the wall it said like max occupancy, 23 persons. They had like 60 niggas in there. And you know, the the toilets in there it's just it's unpleasant you're right i am gonna act like i did hard time motherfucker it was hard time it's very hard to go from my lifestyle to locked in there darling it was hard time so you're right you're right <laughs> it was terribly hard yes indeed i only was in jail for 23 hours nigga i got a year's worth of prison stories he's right goddamn it i can't lie to you he's completely right let's see what else more hate <laughs> let's see the the psychotic nature of these folks here. It's like they know what I speak is true, but they despise the truth. Actually, the conversation with the Mexican dude sounds like the most realistic part. LA and LV share people often. Okay, so, so everything was a lie except that story because you enjoyed it. Okay, Brody, that's fantastic. Then we have this one right here. Thought he was a multimillionaire worth hundreds of millions. It's like, Damn, bro, like I've never, ever, ever in the entire history of the internet came on the internet and said, I am worth fill in the blank amount of money. I've never done that. It's very tacky. That's something that a low class person would do. I would never state I'm worth fill in the blank. Oppositely, I've stated I'm merely a humble teacher. That's all I am. And I would like to restate that for all of the alphabet agencies watching for the United States government. I would like to restate I am merely a humble teacher. And I would also like to say I've never once stated how much money I have or what my net worth is. I've never done that. Not once. And I never will because that's stupid. That's very dumb. I will never do that. So where they get these tall tales from, it beats me. And this is the Internet age. And I'm a streamer, right? So you see me on video. So if I've said what my net worth is, 
just show us the video clip. Can someone provide the video clip? Like people are saying I'm lying about things I've never said, right? It's like, you know, this guy says he has a Bugatti. What the, f I've never said that. Show me the video where I said that. That's crazy. This is the age we're in. They must make up things. Shout out to Steam Rolling supporting the work. Shout out to the mods even getting in there today. You did. Shout out to uh, Dwayne comes right back. He writes, they did you wrong. I take it personally. He's a dummy. Indeed, they did do me wrong. And we need justice, not only with regards to the government and these filthy cops, but also with regards to uh, these haters, you know, put in the work. Shout out to Carter, right? Hashtag free the saints. Indeed, free all the saints, man, because I'm, I'm not the only person that was wrongfully locked up. There were some good brothers in there, honestly. And that's why I did that live session with one of the, one of the gentlemen, gentlemen, I do mean it, uh, who was locked up with me. That's why I did that live session. Give these brothers a voice and understand the true filthy nature of our legal system. And while they locked us up for some BS, I kid you not, they let eight or nine people walk who weren't even citizens. They had no paperwork, no social security on these guys, no fingerprint. Just let them walk. It was insane. Yeah, they're letting all kinds. And then they were locking up meth heads and drug addicts and homeless people. It's like, why are you locking these people up? They're going to get out and reoffend. Leave them out there. We don't need the taxpayer paying for this. But this is the kind of filth that we deal with in, the, in such a society. But more hate, more hate, more hate. Ah, let's see. I'm going to read some good hate. Oh, yeah, this is good right here. That's 100% what I thought. You hire a driver if you're rocking a Maybach. And I, I know that this particular person did not say Maybach. I know they said Maybach or Maybach. I know they said some shit like that. Furthermore, here's the thing. I often remind you have people talking about things they know nothing about. It's like, okay, do you own a Rolls Royce? Oh, no, you don't. Do you own a Maybach? Oh, oh no, you don't. Don't comment on it then. Wait till you get one and then comment. But until then. Don't comment, all right? Because you sound foolish. But imagine people are trying, like, you got arrested leaving an office that's yours, driving to a home in a gated community in a Maybach with a bunch of money, and then people try to make fun of you. What the fuck? Nigga, what planet are we on? What planet are we on? Listen to me. I don't know what hood y'all are from, but in my neighborhood, you know, just, just my neighborhood maybe. In my neighborhood, you got a brother who owns his own office, has a nice home in the burbs of Las Vegas in a gated community, and is driving there in the middle of the night in a Maybach from having worked hard all day earning money. Greenbacks, you dig? I respect that. Oh, yeah, and got busted with a whole bunch of money, cash. I respect a motherfucker like that. That's just me, though. I don't know where y'all are from, but in my book, that ranks high in my book. Like, that's the kind of lifestyle I want to live in. Here's the thing that I want you guys to understand. Dig this. Dig this. That was on a random day. Yeah, I didn't go volunteer to, for the police to fuck with me. That was on a random day. That's the difference between you and I. That was a random day. That wasn't a day where I was like, oh, let me go get a bunch of cash so I can floss. No, that was my actual regular life there, little buddy. That's the major difference. And you guys have seen me on stream before, too, where you have some of these rascals running their mouth. And I was like, call my sister, like, hey, go, go bring some cash over here so we could, so we could you know, talk some shit. How much money did she bring over cash? It was sitting around. I wasn't even at home. I was in my studio when that happened. Remember, this is my real life here. huh? <laughs> but somehow, I'm the guy they hate on. What kind of shit is this? I'm the American dream, motherfucker. Like, I'm the reason, like me, my life, I'm the reason motherfuckers are over there in Albania, motherfuckers in S Somalia. Like, I want to get to America because of me, boy. Well, what do you mean, Marquette? When I was born, my father was in prison for selling crack cocaine, youngin. When I was born, my mother was on crack cocaine. I'm an actual crack baby. I went to horrible public schools in Los Angeles. I grew up part-time with my grandmother who had dementia. If I can make it, you can make it. I am the American dream. I am the result of intelligence and hard work consistently applied. You hate on someone like me, you hate yourself. That's all there is. You hate yourself. I'm the American dream. So when you see somebody like me, you got to respect it, man. If you can't respect it, there's something wrong with you. So that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm reading through these comments and I'm just like, whoa, this world is crazy. You listen to a dirty Jamaican nigga who, who impregnated a stripper who looked horrible 
and now he got a single mom, doesn't see his baby, he's behind on child support, lives in a goddamn busted ass apartment, and you gonna rock with him over the big homie? Bruh, it's crazy. Now, granted, it's a minority of people. It's a minority of people. But you still have to question the society we live in where we prize weakness and gossip among males instead of prizing men who are action-oriented, the doers in the society. Huh? The world's sick out here. We got a sick world out here. Anyways, shout out to Culture Club, writes, peace to the saints, showing a little support. Debrab, I appreciate you. It's always good to see you. I also acknowledge the ballers. Shout out to Reggie. He writes, peace to the saints. Just sent you an email. Do not read aloud. Okay, let me take a look. Make sure I can. Uh... Okay, that's actually my birthday. Uh, so that might be a little bit uh, tough because, uh, you know, obviously my mother would like to see me on my birthday and a number of other uh, folks have tried to schedule things. So, so we'll have to check on it and play it by ear, but that is in fact my birthday. I appreciate that note. Um, may I also acknowledge EJ, he writes, just got in peace to the suit, uh, peace to the saints. That suit is fire. I appreciate you. And you know, the nice thing too, is it's actually really soft to the touch. It is in fact velvet. Um, and, and sometimes you have a fine wool, but it's not quite soft to the touch. I appreciate that compliment. Thank you very much. The ladies love this one. May I also acknowledge by a super chat, shout out to Blake. He writes, Oh, actually, I'm trying to stay with uh, $10 and above. Let me. Oh, okay, he came right back, so let's read this one. He writes, you said there is one race that engages in violence around the world. I don't, I don't think I quite said that, but let's carry on. He writes, you said the wrong group. <laughs> Did I, though? He writes, who are the ones promoting gangster rap around the world? Who has been robbing family stores everywhere? I like this Blake guy. I like this guy. He writes, you yourself have been committing crimes since you were a kid. If anyone who is not your race is listening to you, they need to be rescued. Oh, we have a bona fide racist here. This is very good. I like racism. I really actually do like racism in real life. I'm not just saying that. Uh, Blake, would you be kind enough to come on so we can have a, a bit of a chat about race and racism? Because I, I really do enjoy it. Really, I do. That's the link for Blake. Blake, just come on. Hopefully, you are proud to be an Aryan Superman, and you'd be kind enough to turn on your camera. We can have a, a nice, calm, frank conversation because I think these are very meaningful points. And truth be told, I don't like crime any more than anyone else does. And you know, if there's a violent race, we should surely find out who they are and bring them to justice. So let us see if this race warrior is uh, a man, a real man, or is he scared? I'd love it if he was a brave man, because then we could have a conversation. Let us see. Okay, we've dropped the link. I don't see Blake there. Let's uh, give him a little bit of time. I know sometimes, you know, the scary black man, and I'm a terrifying black man. Really, I am. I I've noticed this my entire life. People are terrified of me. It's, it's quite strange. It's unfortunate. Some people find me to be very friendly, but many people are very tim intimidated and scared. Let's see if Blake will show up. Somebody put, he doesn't have teeth. You don't need teeth to have this conversation. Really, you don't. I, I really want to have this conversation. He, he's disappeared. And these are meaningful things. And, you know, Blake, you really found the right one because I think a lot of the blats would be perhaps offended or, or you know, anxious or emotional. I don't feel anything. You know, I really want to engage this. Like, we'll pop up what you said. We'll review what you said. We'll go through like, hey, this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. This is what the data says. This is what the evidence says. Let's consider some logic around that. I'm more than happy to consider any of your racial theories, and, and we can go through all of them. But you're scared. Hmm, that's a pity. That is a pity. It's a shame. Yes, I guess Blake is not about it. And now don't don't call don't call him a white boy because one, we don't know if he's white. We actually don't. I kid you not. We have a, a lot of race warriors who are white supremacists, but they're not even white. It's funny. Many of them are mongrels and, and various other things. So I don't want to call him a white boy because there's a lot of white men I respect. So I, I don't want to degrade them in the process of dealing with this little fella. So I'm not going to call him a, an adult male, a boy unduly. I'm not going to call him white because we've not seen him. Um, but it looks like he's disappeared. He's terrified. And again, that's another victory for the saint. Another victory for the saint. 
I'm gonna try my sound effects. Damn, no. There we go. That's the one. I need to get my shit together. One day I'm gonna be a real podcaster. I'm gonna be a real podcaster one day. Another victory for the Saints. He ran. He ran. That's what they do. I'm I am a very scary man. I'm terrifying. Ah, he ran. Okay, back to the haters. And I think Blake, he came in at the right time, except he was scared. It's a pity. He said Blake is very much so. Everything you described, yes, and he ran. That's a pity. And I invite I want you guys also to, to know, like, wow, Marquette invited him on. There's a number of these guys, they run from me. You see, because they can defeat the black rapper. They can defeat the black idiotic podcaster. They cannot defeat Marquette Devon Burton. They cannot. I terrify them. I really do. I'm so scary to these people. Quintess wanted no parts of me. I invited him out a long time ago. said, hey, let's debate. Let's have a conversation. Radio silence. And these these types are hilarious to me because they're supposed to be the Aryan Superman. It's like, okay, you're not blonde. You, you have brown hair. You don't have pure blood. You, you said you're mixed with Mexican. Okay. So you're, you're, you're a mongrel. Okay. And you're small and puny. The Aryan Superman is supposed to be tall and strapping with broad shoulders. And you don't look like a Superman. You look like a computer geek, except you don't know anything about computers. And these persons, they pretend to be intelligent and they almost look intelligent to sophomoric, untutored youth who lurk on the internet. But to grown men who are lettered or have experience, they look like imbeciles. And that's why when I say, hey, let's let's debate, let's talk about it, then all of a sudden their racial theories just don't seem to hold water and they don't want to bring it up anymore. It's a pity. It's a pity. And you know Marquette's a real one because Marquette read every word of this man's comment. I read every word of it and I didn't even get emotional like, oh, no, this is not true. I didn't say that. I will acknowledge if something is true, we can go through it. But he's scared. He's scared. It's a pity. It's a pity. Next time. <laughs> Next time. He writes, most races can't deal with educated black folks. Yeah, that's what it appears. Carrying on. Anyway, so you got a guy talking about you hire a driver if you have a Maybach. Even though he doesn't have a Maybach, he knows this. He's aware of this. Now, this is also quite funny because you have impoverished people, mentally impoverished, speaking of experiences they know nothing of. So you're telling me that if I have a personal driver and I'm going to work late on Friday night, right? I'm going to work up to 11 p.m. p.m. at night on a Friday night. I have no intentions of going out at night. I'm going to go home to my old lady in the burbs. I should inconvenience my driver, who's also a human being, and say, hey, stay here on your Friday night where you might want to go out and socialize and wait to drive me 15 minutes to my home and then go home after that. That's stupid. That's dumb. Stop trying to learn things on TV. Pick up a book. Go out. Make something of yourself and be among those who actually have Maybox, and then you can figure out what's what, but you ain't got one. You don't got any friends that got one. You're learning everything through what you are guessing at. You know nothing. But anyways, let's get back to the haters because I, I enjoy this stuff. I enjoy this. It's just comical. The things that they write. Let's see. Look at this guy. He writes, this dude thinks the police in Vegas were impressed by his money. No, I don't think that and frankly I, I wish they didn't find my money i wish my money would have stayed where it was and i would have just drove home and it would have been a regular day that's number one number two i don't think they were impressed by my money they brought out three people to hand count the money and to watch each other and everyone's jaws drop and the other ladies that were in receiving for evidence stopped working and came over and then started gossiping and then when i made it over to the other area like the word had spread like wildfire. And then when I finally got out 23 hours later and I was like, can I get my money back? They were like, no, we can give you, we can do this, this, and this. And then one of the guys says, well, what do you do? And I was like, uh. he's like, yeah, I've never seen that much money ever. I was surprised. Why? Cause we're in Las Vegas. It's a cash rich city. It's a cash liquid city casinos everywhere a lot of people have a lot of cash frankly i didn't think it was that much cash for a guy in a maybach in las vegas i didn't think it was a lot of cash honestly i personally know people who have a significant amount more cash than that on them on a regular basis i didn't think it was a lot of cash he specifically the guy in evidence told me i've never seen this much cash in my life 
which includes his time at work and his time off work. It's not, I think he was impressed. No, I know they were. They were having fucking conversations about it. So please stop it. Please, let's live in reality here, okay? And oh, and by the way, not only were the police impressed, you were impressed too. Stop fucking lying. Jesus Christ, why can't people just say what it is? Carter writes, peace of the saints, reflecting on your time as a teacher, what is your favorite? Oh, and by the way, just for, for the record, I never pride myself on the things that I buy. I pride myself on the things that I'm, the, the help I'm able to give. That's what my life has been about as an adult. Anyone who has been around me, you see this on a consistent basis. From my very first conference, I said, my life right now is not about becoming a millionaire. My life right now is about, excuse me, my, not, my life is not about making myself a millionaire. It's about making millionaires. From my first conference, that's been consistent. I don't pride myself on spending my money on vanity. I could have more cars. I could have more houses. I could have a, I could have a bigger house. I donate my money to, when you watch my political commentary and you're like, damn, he knows a lot about this. You watch my political commentary, you're like, damn, he knows a lot about this topic. Those are the things that I put money behind. That's where the overwhelming majority of my dollars go to. Those things that I talk about, you can tell I'm very serious about. That's where my money goes to. That's what I'm proud of. Anyways, um, so we have a guy who's clearly not Blake and his camera's also not on. Blake, I'm happy to have the conversation. You have to turn your camera on because there's a lot of skittle guzzlers who like to do obscene things. So if, if you would refrain from playing games, it's, it's sad. Some people are so lonely. Like this is the only time they get uh, engagement. Anyways, the person writes, what is your favorite lesson that you were able to teach your kids? Well, I'll tell you that first the lesson that they taught me. And I think often we're always, we want to be the speaker. We want to like people to look at us and good public speaker. We want to be the teacher. But every great speaker is a better listener. Every great teacher is a better student. Every great general is a better soldier. That's Marquette Devon Burton. You can quote that. Send that to me as well on uh, IG. You know I mean? We got to catalog all this stuff. But the first thing that my students taught me is that respect is earned. You see, when I grew up in my neighborhood, people respected me, but I grew up with these people. They'd observe me over time. So I grew up in my neighborhood. I got respect. They grew up with me over time. They knew my character. I didn't have to go in there and earn respect. Then I went to university. These were civilized people. They treat one another with respect because they are upper class and upper middle class. Then I started teaching in Baltimore, Maryland. You walk in and it's like no one respects you as an adult. No one respects you as an authority figure. No one respects you as a teacher. No one respects you as a patriarch among those 35 black kids and three Latino kids, zero white kids. They're running amok, walling out. There is no assumed respect. You got to earn every bit of it. You have to establish yourself. You got to put in the work. You have to show that you actually care about them. That was a huge lesson for me. Number one. Then the second lesson for me, not for them, was you're really a great leader. You're really something when you can achieve through other people, like you achieve from them. I was judged as a teacher, not based on me being smart, not based on me being good at tests, and I'm great at tests. I was judged as a teacher based on my kids being smart, good at tests. That's what I, I was judged based on them, on what I could raise them up to. That taught me a lot about true leadership, true excellence. It's nothing for me to make myself great. It's a lot for me to make other people great. That was the big light bulb for me. Now, when you write, uh, what is your favorite lesson that you were able to teach your kids? Oh, so many things, different things for different kids. There's a couple things that I heard kids say that just, you know, it, it left me shattered upon the ground. Uh, I, there's one kid named Anthony Douglas. He's an adult now, so I'm going to say his name. His name was Anthony Douglas. Very humorous young man, very clever. And I was doing a segment on world religions, talking about the major monotheistic religions. And as we were going through explaining the religions in a world history course to 12-year-olds, 11, 12-year-olds, he said, oh, Mr. Burton, God ain't white? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, God ain't white? And I was just like, damn, that's crazy. Which makes sense for him to assume that. Because if you were to type into Google, Adam and Eve, you will see a bunch of whites, which I understand. 
if I was white or European, I would for sure make everyone in my likeness an image. But if you look at what scientists say, white European scientists, well, the first humans were black. And in fact, there's periods of time on earth where only black people were on earth. And then the peoples of the earth spread to different regions. And over time, they adapted to certain environmental circumstances. And you had different phenotypes uh, becoming dominant. You know, certain features, racial features is what we call them today. And so clearly at the beginning of time, if you know the biblical story is true, then undoubtedly Adam and Eve would have to be black. It's just no other explanation. Now, Jesus is, this comes much later in human history. Jesus could theoretically be white. He, he's probably not, but he could be. But it is literally impossible for Adam and Eve to be white. And, you know, if Adam was made in the likeness and image of God, and I'm not saying I buy any of this stuff, then theoretically God would have to be black, right? So anyways, just when the kid said, wow, Mr. Burton, God's not white. I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, they got you, bro. <laughs> like, it, and it's like the darkness, like, like, like you, you have been pulled in and, and your mind has been captured. Like you were an actual white supremacist unknowingly. And then I gave you light. Like I allowed you to see, like if, if I, no one had explained this, you, you've been going to church and you did not understand this Sunday school. You didn't understand this still. That was uh, one of the biggest ones for me. He writes, also is the most important lesson uh, that most adults in today's society have not learned in their youth. Well, people are different and you know, they may have certain lessons that are maybe more important to their individual uh, progress or success. But I think commonly, uh, if you go to our three sentence Bible, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people. Number one, be yourself. The most uncommon thing that I find with people is that they don't know who they are. When you don't know who you are, you cannot have self-respect. If you don't have self-respect, you can never respect anyone else. That's why it's so easy to find jealousy and hatred in our societies. So understanding the self on the many layer uh, levels at which you can understand the self, that is the most critical lesson that people are lacking. Thank you for those very, uh, very insightful questions. Shout out to C writes, Peace of the Saints, another victory over keyboard warriors. You ain't never lied. And here's a funny thing. The beautiful reality that we're establishing through evidence is that I am who I've said I am. But here's the thing. I always tell you, human beings falter. Let's say I did falter. Would that take away any of the extraordinary things I've done over a, lot, a long lifetime? Yeah, I've lived the lives of 10 men. And I have many people who can vouch. Marquette Devon Burden changed my life. Yeah, I know people's mothers who will vouch for you. I know people's mothers that would kill you for me. That's how much I've done for them. Hmm? Yeah, people's moms love me because of what I've done. That's, when, that's the real measure to me, <laughs> how they mama feel about you. So anyways, yeah, I'm the real deal. It's a beautiful thing. But we get in this mindset to where we want to do everything to destroy a hero, we don't allow them to be human. In this case, no, I stuck to my discipline. I always have. It's very easy for me to never use drugs, alcohol, caffeine, because I didn't grow up on it. I never used it before. I don't know nothing about it. Very easy for me to stick to that. But even if I didn't, recognize we're all human. We're all human beings. Like, ha allow your mind to be reasonable and rational. When you expect human beings to be uh, have certain levels of infallibility, you're setting yourself up for failure. And you're also a psychopath because you're waiting to see a human make a mistake. Humans are going to make mistakes. I didn't, but humans will. Uh, shout to Jam. He writes, ished on the internet dorks. Hashtag Putin 2024. That was good. I um, also acknowledge, uh, okay, so Blake is right. He writes, everybody trusts me and my life's great, okay? Except when you all go to k-town and places like that and i start and start looting stores and we have to help rebuild blake honestly why don't you just come on and explain all this we can have a good conversation about it i really we, we can have a great conversation about it. i'd absolutely love to i have no idea why you keep on typing i'm telling you save your money save your money you you you're sending in low super chats save your money just come on we have a conversation about it if you really believe you see but i think that you actually don't believe and i'll tell you why i know you don't believe Happy people, they don't have time to hate on other people. Happy people are not jealous people. Happy people don't busy themselves with being negative. You're not a happy person. You're deeply flawed. 
and because you're deeply flawed, you look out to see problems in others. Amari, how you feel? You know, I'm just I'm just kicking a little bit of game right now on the internet. Yeah, podcast. I'm all right. I'm all right. Things are going well. Things are going well. Well, pleasure to meet you. I appreciate that. Well, right now I'm talking about I caught a case. Police pulled me over, hit me with a DUI charge. But I was sober. I never drink or use alcohol or any drugs. Never. Never in life. I do some boxing. I stopped competing. But, you know, I still love the sport. So long story short, um, a lot of internet nerds are like, oh, he says he doesn't drink. He says drinking is bad. He says drinking is for weak people, which I do. And, and I truly believe that. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and as you said, your father was an alcoholic. Someone like. Right. Exactly. They, exactly. It was shit. We damn near need to bring some of that back. Yeah. But the point is, growing up in a similar situation probably to you that a lot of black folks grew up in, we see people suffer from alcohol. We see them suffer from drugs. Right. And so that's why I don't engage in it, and I speak against it. And then you have people who are wicked, and they, they hate someone like me saying, don't drink, don't engage in drugs. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm actually live right now, so I got to – yeah, I'm live right now. But it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Absolutely. You be cool. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Anyways, uh, where were we? Where were we? I can't even remember. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We were talking about Blake. Blake, bruh, quit bullshitting and come on, man. Like, we ready to have this conversation, Blake. We, we ready to chop it up with you. Because I love racism. I really do. I really do. I, I get deep into racism, honestly. In fact, I've studied under under some of the premier scholars in in race theory and race. You know, like I'm not talking about the liberal ones. I'm talking about the the conservative ones. You know, the ones that interview neo Nazis and all this stuff. Yes, AJ Breger. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let, let's have a conversation, Blake. Why are you so scared? You are the superior race. I take it. Come on down. But you're still scared typing. How is it that you're the superior one, but you're scared to come have a conversation with someone like me? You're the superior one. Come be superior. Show us. I'm going to just have to give up on Blake. I could tell. I'm going to have to give up. I'm going to have to give up on him because he's scared. That's all right. I'm giving up. Back to the haters and, and, the, oh, and the hate. Blake is scared. Shout out to C. Breezy. He writes, um, Chris Ben, super chat. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say your full name. You actually wrote it in the email, though. He writes, I don't drink and my girlfriend does. Yee. Is it okay for her to invite a large group of coworkers over her apartment that includes men and women? If so, drinking out or in, what is an okay size group? Well, you see, Chris, the most challenging thing you could do is try to control someone. It goes, of course, back to the three-sentence Bible or the three-sentence Quran, the three-sentence Torah. Be yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to good people. Just imagine. Imagine she didn't allow you to be yourself. You got to allow her to be herself. You see, people might hear me speak vehemently against alcohol, drugs, and all of these things. That doesn't mean I'm looking down on you. That means that I have a way that I follow and I believe in that I think is good. And I think this other way is not the right way, but if you are currently suffering under drugs or you currently find that you can enjoy your Friday night better with alcohol, carry on. Be yourself. I would never try to change you, but if you were to come to me and seek guidance and seek advice, I would give it to you, but you would have to be a seeker. Finding is for the seekers. If she is not seeking, if she is not coming to you for, for guidance, well, then you must allow her to operate on her current program and her current instructions. And we all know she ain't got instructions. She's headed for destructions. And don't go with her down that path of destruction. If you're not a drinker and she is a drinker and she's still drinking, well, that lets you know something. She ain't following leadership. Has Marquette Devon Burton ever dealt with females who are drinkers? 
for sure. It's hard to find ones that aren't. But here's the funny thing. When they're around Marquette Devon Burton, do they drink? Hell nah. When they're not around Marquette Devon Burton while being involved with me, do they say they don't drink? Correct. It's like they've like seen the light. They've changed their lifestyle. They're following leadership. They're following my way. And did I ever ask them? Never. I would never do that because most of them are going to lie or they're going to feign compliance, which is to say they're going to pretend as though they're with the program when they really ain't. So what you have to assess is what does she really want? Does she want to live and be worldly and host, you know, soirees and happy hours? Or does she want to live your lifestyle under your values? That's the deeper conversation. And hopefully you don't have to have that conversation. Hopefully you're in a situation where she says, look, you're the boss. <laughs> you know, you're the leader. I'm the follower. That is why Confucius had those what he called basic relationships. King, subject, husband, wife, older sibling, younger sibling. When people don't respect those basic relationships, then you, you end up having problems. Okay, so I got um, some DMs from Blake. He came in on the stage, but he won't turn his camera on. And he, he DM me. He writes, let me in, coward. Let me in. That's hilarious. So this might not even be him. I think it's one of these home, uh, these uh, Skittle guzzlers. You know, these people are quite sick mentally, very unwell people. So uh, he's clearly a Skittle guzzler. And if he were to turn on his camera, uh, we could have a conversation. But I can see that he doesn't want to have a conversation. So I I'm done with him. He's, he's playing games. And that's not my thing. Not my thing. I don't play games. Not with grown men. Maybe if I had kids or, you know, don't play with me. Play with your bitch. Uh, shout out to Joshua supporting the work. I appreciate it. I also acknowledge, okay, it looks like we're caught up there. And you see, I think the brother came in because he heard the good word. You dig? You don't hear the good word too much. Maybe the, the spirit brought him in. Huh? Back to the haters. Back to the haters. For comic relief, right? Let's see what else we got here. A little bit of comedy. He writes, you were in the drunk tank till you sobered up. Everything else is cap. Okay, the drunk tank, was I? Okay, so clearly he's not very smart because the greater charge is the one that you're really going to be categorized on. You know, if you've ever been locked up, they're, they're going to categorize you on a number of things, maybe your race, maybe your gang affiliations, and also your, your level of crime, right? That might be something they categorize you on. I was there on a gun charge, dummy. Gun charges are actually quite serious. So... I'm going to be categorized on the gun charge. Uh, so that's another lie. But let's carry on. A little more hate. Let's see. And this is funny right here. Um, this person writes, posted a live with his supposed cellmate. He even used your thumbnail. Now, the thing that's comical to me is like, you motherfuckers are fans. Like, y'all motherfuckers got to quit lying. Y'all are fans. And this is how I know I'm the best. This is how I know I'm the best. I'm so good. I'm so good that people hate, but they're like, you know what? Nobody talks it like he talks it. And the, the ball's pretty. He's the bald head lover. He's the bald head lover. The man's so damn handsome. I got to see him. And he's so well spoken. I got to hear him. I got to see him. I got to hear him. But damn it, I'm jealous and I'm hating. I'm hating. Like they watch everything that I do. Like there's no way you could be so well informed and appraised without keeping an eye on what I'm doing. I mean, he's reporting back to the chief nerd. Hey, I I, I saw what he was doing. It's, it's like, bro, come on, man. Like you, you are a fan. You got to admit it. You're a fan. Funny thing is he writes, did a live with his supposed cellmate. You see, this is how I know you're not a real one. Real ones like me, they respect when I do something like that because they're like, all right, look, Quet is living top shelf. And by, mind you, this is not new. I've been living this way for a long time now. He's living top shelf. He has no incentive to take someone who's been accused of committing a crime, an older black man, and platform him and honor him with attention and a listening ear. He has no incentive. Marquette doesn't make a penny from that. And also, people don't support those live streams. No, they don't. So Marquette is actually effectively losing money. Even my assistant, my employees like, Marquette, why are you spending time with someone like this? But real ones who come from the struggle that I come from, and you might think because someone's 50 or 60 that they're done. No, I don't believe that. You can still make it if you still try. That meant everything to that man to have that opportunity to be put in the spotlight and given voice. Real people respect something like that. I could have changed that man's life, changed his trajectory. Huh? He still messages me to this day. 
That's called kindness, dummy. But people who are dim-witted and evil and hateful and negative, they don't even comprehend good deeds. But real people who actually come from the struggle, they're like, damn, like, let me imagine. Okay, so I'm in Vegas. I'm a random guy who's not from Vegas. I end up going to jail off of some bull. I meet a, a successful guy in jail, and he says, hey, when you get out, hit me up. I'm going to bring you on my show. And then I hit him up, not expecting him to respond. And he told me, he's like, bro, like, I don't expect you to respond to me. Man, they busted you with, with this much money in a Maybach. I don't expect you to respond to me. And then when you responded, I was shocked. And then when you said, come on down, I was even more shocked. I showed up. I didn't expect you to open the door for me. You opened the door, welcomed me in like it was my home and we were family. And then bring me on your show. I'm thankful. You got to be a fucking hater not to, not to see the beauty in that. <laughs> you got to be a real psychopath to not see the beauty on, in that. It's crazy. You have to be a psychopath. Then the person writes, back to the haters, I'm enjoying this. He writes, he even used your thumbnail. Nigga, hell yeah, I did. I used it again for this stream. Thank you. It's the most you've ever contributed, and I appreciate it, okay? And the audience thanks you as well. Yes, I used the thumbnail of one of these haters. They'll remain nameless. They'll remain nameless. It doesn't matter what his name is. Mark, why'd you use his thumbnail? Here's the funny thing. I kid you not. Today, I was leaving the courthouse. And, you know, young lady says, hey, you should probably go live about this. I bet people would like to hear about this. They ask a lot. I say, you're right. I will go live about this. I say, should we take a photo? Because I was going to evidence pickup to get my gun. <laughs> you did. They took, the, they took the clapper. I want it back, God damn it. So we're going to, to the evidence vault to get my gun. I was like, should we take a picture here since we didn't take one at the, the um, courthouse, you know, for the thumbnail? She says, no, no. Use that hater's thumbnail. It's funny. It's like you're trolling them. I was like, ah, love, you're right. I like how you think. She was like, yeah, use the hater's thumbnail. I was like, say no more. It's done. I like these kind of things entertain me. Like it was, it was fun for me. It was fun. I was like, it's fun. I enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie to you. So his uh, this little psychopath right here, who's really my fan, he writes. He even used your thumbnail, nigga. I sure did. And I hope you keep producing these high quality thumbnails. You're saving me time. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> did look at this one. It's like they can't rationalize that there are men walking the earth who walk this earth and stand on principles, who are serious about their respect. They don't understand that. Psychopath writes this. He can't believe I am who I say I am. Quote, you can be found guilty of DUI, and we're going to see, was the saint found innocent, guilty, no contest? What was the plea? What was going on? You can, quote, you can be found guilty of DUI. Notice it's an idiot. He doesn't even put a capital letter on the uh, first letter. You can be found guilty of DUI without drinking anything. They probably got him for smoking weed. Well, that's comical. Anyone who knows me, I absolutely despise smoke of all kind, whether it's hookah, cigarettes, or marijuana. Marijuana, mota, ganja. In fact, when I was in Vietnam hosting a group of about 35 men there, and we were out having dinner and enjoying fresh air, there's some dirty Europeans next to me, and I told the guy, hey, man, uh, if you would put out that cigarette, I'll pay for anything you want. I'll cover your bill and anything else you want to order. It's on me. You, know, you have a ball. He's like, oh, are you serious? I was like, I'm very serious. Please put the cigarette out. I despise smoke. And, you know, I'm always in custom suits, man, like custom, handmade from scratch. Do you really think I want to have to take my suit to the dry cleaner from being around you, know, you dirtbag smoking marijuana? And furthermore, if you read my book, you don't get high on your own supply. You dig? I got in that game when I was 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. I was a young boy, really outside, man. No, I don't use drugs. You see, my old heads, they taught me, you don't use the drugs, dummy. You sell the drugs, okay? You don't use them. You sell them. The problem is a lot of you dumb idiots, N-words, are, you see, you guys are low IQ, so you guys actually use the drugs. That's the problem with you. You use the drugs. And so as a result of you guys using the drugs, you can't comprehend how there's someone who's superior to you and actually has true character. It wouldn't cross my mind to use them. I would sell them, but I'm not in that business anymore. Haven't been since I was a kid. So there you go. So here you are. You got one, one dummy, one dirty blat. Presumably, I mean, all of these, there's a lot of dirty, filthy whites, Latinos, Asians. They, they're they all succumbing to the marijuana. They're all succumbing. So they just can't imagine that I'm actually sober. And then here's another one. This is funny. I got a pretty good memory. This particular account, and, you know, I love the 
combat sports. So of course, I'm going to remember um, Bruce Lee. This guy actually is all over my videos commenting as a fan. So he's a fan of mine, but also a hater as well. This guy's busy. Like this motherfucker got two jobs. Imagine you, you like, you go to the club and you like, you know, you breaking bottles and spilling champagne all over the floor. You go do that. And then you also have the job as the janitor at the club too. It's like, God damn, this motherfucker's working two jobs in contradictory positions. Like this motherfucker is doing everything. It's wild out here. So this dude's an actual fan of mine. I definitely recognize his username, and he is also a hater at the same time. It's, it's just amazing. It is amazing. Yes, and we, we could go on forever with the hater comments. I think I'll do a few more because I kind of enjoy it. Oh, yes, indeed. You can get my book, The Black Box, using this link here, or you can just go to Amazon.com and slim, simply type in the Black Box, Marquette Devon Burton. You'll find that it is a five-star book. Yes, that's right. Thousands and thousands of purchases. It's still at five stars. Why? Because it's a masterwork, and it's written as a guidance to you in terms of how to operate successfully in this day. And though it's a biographical work about me, it really encourages you to think about yourself. It encourages self-reflection so that you can get to that next level and make sure that your life story is one worth writing about. So do check it out. I highly recommend it. And I don't say that to make me money because anyone who's ever had money knows that books ain't got profit margins like that. You dig? Unless you're like uh, a Harry Potter author, right? And I don't, I don't write imaginary rubbish. Carrying on. Uh, shout out to Paul supporting. I don't know if I um, use that one already, but shout out to Paul. Carrying on. A little bit, a little bit more on the haters. little more because I enjoy it. Let's see what else we got. Ah, yes, this is a good one right here. He asked this guy, he says, hey, puke. You still going to get that body cam footage? And you know what I want to know? I also want to know where that body cam footage is. Because, in fact, if I was high or drunk, let's see the body cam footage. I'd love to see how Marquette interacted with four police officers. One was a sergeant. One was plain clothes. How was he interacting during a time where there should be high levels of stress, high levels of uncertainty? You're in handcuffs. You're about to go to jail. They're about to search your car illegally. You know you got a gun in there. You know you got a bunch of money as well. They're about to impound your car. You're going down. How did Marquette perform, talk, and behave under pressure? I'd like to see it. I want to know, is he really that? I want to see it. So to all you little dirty internet sleuths, go get that body cam footage. It is, in fact, public record, and the case is officially closed. You can get it, and I want to see it. Shout out to Dimitri. He writes, peace to the saints. My girl took upon herself to contribute into something that benefits me. I like to hear that. But I had asked her prior not to. Should I check her or let it be since it benefited me? She usually does. Listen, I say you uh, you should be thankful. I'm not saying you should thank her, but you should be thankful. You see, there's a beautiful pairing between man and woman. That's why I have manandwomanbrand.com. I encourage all of you to go there and get you some merch so we can represent that natural pair of man and woman. You see, we often see the rainbow flag, which is a flag that represents something that we don't promote. But then you say, well, where's the flag that promotes what, what we live out every day? heterosexuality, nuclear families, the unity of man and woman, manandwomanbrand.com. But women, they are our natural pair. And you know what? There are some strengths that we have and there's some strengths that they have. Surely they're more attentive to details. They're very caring and loving. And there's a lot of contribution they could make. And you should allow her to think. Hopefully you get a wealthy, intelligent woman and allow her to use her wealth and intelligence to enhance you. Like, for example, this very, I don't even know what this thing is called. But this thing right here, a woman got this. She said, hey, Marquette, you know, I saw like, you know, your friends do podcasts and they got one of these and it looks really professional and you're professional. You're a podcaster. So I thought you should have one. So I got you one. She just what she told me after I unwrapped it. They like to wrap these things in the gifts. And so you got to let the lady love on you. I mean, you got to let her take care of you. That's their position. And when you're really a boss, this is all they want to do. They want to dedicate their time, effort, resources and capital to you. Accept it. Uh, shout to Brandon. He writes, peace of saints. I appreciate you. Shout to the real ones. You dig. 
Shout out to the real ones. May I also acknowledge uh, guests with a baller alert. He writes, peace to the saints, supporting the work. Blessings. Blessings. I appreciate you. Shout out to the real ones. You dig? Because we are teaching today. So this will be the last uh, bit I'll go through on this, uh, the hater comments. And I just want to say, you know what? I too want to see that body footage. If Marquette Devon Burton is not who Marquette Devon Burton says he is, surely we can find out from that body cam footage. God damn it, you haters. I want y'all to get together, pull up your money, and get that body cam footage since y'all are so damn successful. <laughs> I saw one of these haters. I kid you not. They were giving motivational speeches from the back of a fucking Honda. I was like, God damn it. Living in like the middle of nowhere. Motherfucker living in Wisconsin. I'm like, God damn, niggas live in Wisconsin. That's crazy. You're in the entertainment industry living in Wisconsin, but I can't hate you. The cost of living is amazing, isn't it? Cost of living, there's like, cost like $5 per month for rent. It's amazing. No, shout out to you. You're saving hella money. I really do promote things like that. Absolutely. That's a good thing. Save that money. And I clicked on some of the uh, comments on this haters uh, page just to see what, like, what are the nature of these haters? And I even saw like some females. I was like, word, say it ain't so. I got some female haters. I was like, that can't be so. That can't be so. So I clicked on one of their profiles and then it brought up this and I was like, ah, I understand now. And I, I, I took, took a look at it and I was like, oh, okay. Like, so we can see right here um, in this video, this person is a guzzler of Skittles. This person has clearly been offended because I promote the nuclear family and the unity of man and woman instead of woman and woman. Ah, I understand. We have the army of the wicked, those who engage in sexually deviant practices. Oh, those are the ones that are angry at me. Makes sense. I understand now. Yes, it's those who hate morality. I get it. I'm the conscience of the modern world, apparently. Shout out to Carter. He writes, I pray you get the money back. They stole sickening. You know, another crazy thing, I couldn't even retrieve my burner today. I was at the... Uh, the evidence vault. And this is why we should distrust government because they're liars and they're incompetent. And I go to the evidence vault during business hours and they don't even respond to the, the bell to be admitted to the evidence vault. Then I call, they don't answer the phone at all. Then once I finally get through and I ask them, like, they say, well, what are you here to retrieve? I said, I'm here to retrieve a firearm that's fully loaded with one in the head. And they say, oh, well, we can't give it back to you with the ammunition. So we have to take the ammunition. I said, well, the ammunition in that particular firearm is actually quite expensive. So I'd for sure like the ammunition. You stole it from me with the ammunition. So I'd like you to return it with the ammunition. Shout out to Crown King supporting the work. And they say, no, we can't do that. I said, oh, okay. That is curious. You guys steal from the citizens that you're supposed to be protecting and serving. I've been absolved of all guilt the truth has come out and you still are going to steal my shit. Amazing. Amazing. Now, let me go ahead and play the audio for you guys uh, from the courtroom. Here we go. Just give me a little second here. Next is Marquette Burton. If you guys can confirm that you were able to hear that little bit of audio right there, just so we can make sure that uh, you can actually hear the video because this is an audio. This is not a visual thing. Fantastic. Okay. So I, and the funny thing too, is they have no respect. They got a boss in there, you know, waiting all day just to be heard, have my case heard. When really in actual fact, this is what lets you know the government is only really good at one thing, murder. That's it. The American government, they're only good at murder and sending your money abroad to finance murder. That's really all they're good at. They're not good at anything else, really. So. You sit there all day, and then this is what happens. I'll go ahead and play it. Thank you. Next is Marquette Burton, 23PC096876. Are you Mr. Burton? Yes. And Mr. Burton is here because of an arrest on December 22nd of 2023 for driving under the influence and possession of firearm while under the influence two misdemeanor offenses. He was released and given today as a return date. I've not received charges from the state. I'll next up to the state. I've not received charges from the state. 
So this occurred in December of 2023. We're now in 2024, the next year. And you don't have charges from the state. Oh, gee, why is that? You see, when I was arrested, that's when I think it's called the initial arraignment. And they say, oh, hey, we want to press these charges. At that time, when they were pressing charges on some people, dropping the cases on most people, including people who are illegal aliens, uh, they said, well, we need more time. We want to fuck with this guy. We need more time. Well, what do they need time for? They need time to review the evidence. And in my case, they took a blood draw. So if the charge is being under the influence, well, the blood would let you know if I'm under the influence. So basically, if that blood come back dirty, guilty, open shut. That blood come back clean, then all of a sudden we need to, hmm, okay. So. The state has decided not to proceed against you in this case. Quote, the state has decided not to proceed against you in this case. I'll repeat that again. The state, meaning the filthy, wicked, rotten government, end quote. Oh, actually, that wasn't the quote. That was my part. This quote, the state has decided not to proceed against you in this case, end quote. So are you Internet dirtbag liars telling me that I was drunk and or high? with a gun fully loaded with one in the head and a bunch of money on me. And the government's like, you know what? We're going to just let that slide. <laughs> Is that what you dummies are telling me? Brody riding around with the clapper, a bunch of money, and he's high and drunk. And the police pull you over for speeding on the freeway and running a red light. And they're like, you know what? All of that stuff, nah, we're going to just let it slide. That's what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? No one's that stupid. Come on. Nobody's that stupid. No one's that stupid. Why did they drop the case? They dropped the case because they took a blood draw and the blood came back clean and healthy. Why? Because I am clean and healthy and I exercise every day. The very least, 30 minutes of sweat. That's not 30 minutes of exercise. That's 30 minutes of sweat. Never. No drugs. Never. Not a drop of alcohol, never, no smoking, never any caffeine. I live what I've said every day of my entire life, not one day off from those things I just mentioned. That's who I really am in real life. That's who I will always be. I will die like that. Those are the proclamations that I make. Huh? So, yes, it's been verified. I'm him carrying on haters. I want to see you haters in the comments apologizing. Oh, Jim Marquette, uh, you know, I'm Jim Marquette. The uh, denial of charges takes the matter off calendar. It's possible but unlikely that the state could Very file unlikely. charges against you in the future. If they do it is possible but unlikely. Very unlikely. It's impossible. In fact, I'd love it for you to do it because then we could see that it's clearly harassment. Though the charges, uh, the state may not bring up charges against me, I'll damn sure bring up charges against them. I had to sit there for hours listening to a bunch of junkies go through their cases, a bunch of imbeciles, long criminal records, third-time offenders, DUIs. They're actually drunk, putting the society at risk, doing all of the things that I despise and speak against constantly. What happened? You let them off most cases. Oh, yeah, you know, they plead no contest. We're going to sentence you to 30 days or 60 days, 120 days, suspended sentence or credit for time served. Everybody got off scot-free. But you're wasting my fucking time. And I don't forgive at all. And I will bleed every penny from my bank account to pursue you, dirty, evil sons of bitches. And I also want all of you haters to know that you've never seen anything like me in your entire life. That's why I realize it's hard for you to accept what I really am. Me, the likes of which you've never seen before, you'll never see again. Make sure you save the fucking video. Just so you'll be notified again, that's not likely. Please stay out of trouble. You're free to go. Next. I, I can't tell you how angry that got me at the end when he says, please stay out of trouble. You're free to go. I want to be like, trouble? What the fuck are you talking about? I was leaving my office, you idiot. The only trouble that a successful black man encountered on that Friday right before Christmas, the only trouble I encountered was your fucking pig-ass police.
That was the trouble. These motherfuckers I pay tax money to, that was the trouble in my life. Aside from that, my life is easy and peaceful. You who are supposed to protect and serve are trouble to me. Stay out of trouble. You in dirt bag. Stay out of trouble. It's amazing. And what that lets you know is that there, there's no discrimination from these devils. These devils see everyone as the exact same. I'm there wearing a, the finest suit this side of the Mississippi. Stay out of trouble. Same shit he told the, the, the 30 or so dirtbag criminals that went up before me who were all found guilty and admitted guilt. No contest, no contest plea, no contest plea. Corrupt legal system utterly corrupt. And what happens? They, they take a no contest plea, they get time served or they get their sentence suspended. And then what happens is they come back for another date. And if they haven't gotten into trouble and some of them will, then they'll change the charge from uh, DUI to reckless driving, reckless driving, which is a lie. That's not what it was. The whole system is corrupt. The people who participated in, in it are corrupt. The people employed by it are corrupt. Shout out to Joseph supporting the work. I appreciate it. Um, that's most of it. Uh, there's a little bit of audio after that. When I was leaving out, there was a, uh, a young man, uh, came up to me and, uh, you know, Hey man, what's up? It's good to see you and you know, all that good stuff. I don't know if I was locked up with him. I think I might've been locked up with him. He had some piercings on his face. Of course, you don't have this stuff when you're, uh, you know, behind the wall. And of course he's wearing a civilian clothes. So I don't know if he was, was like a fan or I was locked up with him or what the case was, but he's like chopping up. Like, oh, how, you know, how things going? Oh, I'm glad this case is over. So who knows? I was just very cordial, uh, but nice young man. And um, then after that, I went to the evidence uh, vault and I wasn't able to retrieve my belongings because the filthy, rotten, unorganized uh, government where they, they book all kinds of um, overtime hours that they don't work because they don't even fucking work when they're supposed to be working regular hours. Anyways, uh, I'll give you guys some time uh, to send in your comments, questions. Comments, questions, tuition. And while the haters are here, feel free to get them mad. Feel free to get them mad. <coughs> Excuse me. Give you guys some time sending your comments, questions, and then we'll go ahead and wind down. And again, feel free to get the haters mad. Show them what they can't do. Show them what they show them the liquid, the cash liquidity they don't have. Show them the respect you have. Let's get them mad. I think I'll enjoy this. Shit, I might as I might even go on my phone, sneak over here, uh, sneak out in the corner, and super chat myself. I might do it.
Peace to the Saints. Ah, life is good. Life is good. Shout out to Carter. He writes, Peace to the Saints, innocent under Sasson law. You dig? Now, so acknowledged by PayPal. Shout out to Victor. He writes, Bless you. You sneeze. Please tell us you are going to have them reimburse you for the car, the time, the inconvenience. Please, you're a man of the people, our people. I appreciate that. You know what's funny? When we were leaving uh, the courthouse, my old lady says, uh, or we're, someone drove me there, right? So someone drove me there. And um, when we're leaving the courthouse parking lot, uh, pay for parking, uh, the parking attendant says, do you want a receipt? And I, I say, no. And my old lady's like, no, no, no. Yeah, we do want a receipt. She's like, yeah, get these people for every penny, which is to say, we want them to pay for our parking. Yes, you know, they're going to pay for everything. Everything that they did, we're going to try to get them to pay for. And if not, we'll, we'll tie them up in litigation until I run out of money. And that's fine with me. Or maybe we'll just buy a big billboard that says something super foul about Las Vegas PD. Get creative. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Let's see. Saints, it's been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you all. Until next time.